In the past, most Westerners thought of Yugoslavia as a gorgeous country they'd love to visit. But starting in 1991, this nation, unified since 1918, was torn apart by ferocious wars of secession. This film was shot in Bosnia-Herzegovina in 1992. During the previous five months, Islamist fundamentalists had started a secessionist rebellion. They were supported by the US and German governments, which coveted the economically strategic Balkans. Secession was opposed by loyalist Yugoslavs from all ethnic groups. Powerful Western interests wanted to intervene, but they couldn't just start bombing. They needed favorable public opinion. They needed the work of the mass media. The media claimed the loyalist Serbs were motivated by hatred of Muslims. In fact, the Serbs weren't motivated by hatred at all. They wanted to hold Yugoslavia together, and they didn't want to be ruled by an Islamic fundamentalist faction. Many, if not most, Muslims agreed they too were loyal to Yugoslavia. The Western media labeled the loyalist Serbs the new Nazis. The media called the loyalist Muslims rebels. But the media called the Islamic fundamentalists moderate Democrats. ITN, the British news station, was the first to mass distribute images to support demonization of the Serbs and the loyalist Muslims. Those images came from film that ITN shot in two locations, at a detention center for POWs and a refugee center in Bosnia-Herzegovina. By chance, a crew from Serbian television, RTS, was filming at the same locations that day. We filmed the same things they filmed, and sometimes we filmed them too. The Serbian producers of this film were part of that RTS film crew. The U.S. production work was done by the website, EmperorsClothes.com. We will show you what ITN left out and how ITN doctored raw images to produce the pictures that fooled the world. Here's Thomas Dijkman. He was the German journalist who first raised suspicions about these famous ITN pictures. He's saying, look at some newspapers, most of the Western media. Not only is there no real difference in opinion on foreign policy matters, but even the same phrases are repeated. You see the same pictures with the same captions again and again. The ITN pictures bothered Dijkman. Looking at them, one night his wife noticed something. ITN claimed the Bosnian Muslims were imprisoned behind barbed wire. Why, she wondered, was the wire attached on their side of the fence? They could pull out the nails. Dijkman smelled a rat. He suspected the photos had been fabricated. He suspected special camera angles, tricky editing. He wanted to go to Ternopoli to see for himself. And there he saw the concentration camp that never existed. Examining things on location, Dijkman saw what had been done. The reporters, Penny Marshall and the others and her crew, were in a barbed wire enclosed space near a transformer station and barn. From there, they took pictures of refugees who were walking around quite freely outside the fence. 
During his visit, Dykeman made a drawing of the buildings and people as they had appeared on the day the ITN crew filmed at Tenopolye. There was a barn and a transformer station, a refugee center building, an open air reception area, a recreation area near the refugee center, the fenced-in area from inside which the ITN crew did their filming, and the barbed wire and chicken wire, which was portrayed as evidence of a death camp at Tenopolye. Thomas Dykeman. What Thomas Dykeman realized was the Western world had been deceived by pictures fashioned using camera angles and editing. He published his conclusions in the newspaper Novo. His report was picked up by a small alternative London magazine called Living Marxism, or LM. On January 23, 1997, ITN struck back. The big news station and reporters Ian Williams and Penny Marshall, who had been awarded several prestigious awards for the phony pictures from Chernopolye, including the Royal Television Society and BAFTA awards, filed suit against LM, charging libel. What really happened at Omarska and Chernopolye the day Penny Marshall filmed? The impression one would get from the pictures everyone saw was that ITN sneaked into a Bosnian Serb death camp and hurriedly shot some pictures and then rushed off. This is simply untrue. On August 5th, 1992, Channel 4 reporter Ian Williams, ITN reporter Penny Marshall, ITN cameraman Jeremy Irvin and their technical crew asked for and were granted permission to visit Omarska and Ternopolye, claiming that they wanted to show the world how the loyalist authorities treated rebel POWs and how they helped local Muslim refugees to survive. The local authorities provided military escort since fighting was going on nearby. So these two crews, the ITN crew and ours, visited two locations that day. The first stop was Omarska. This is Simo Dilyacha, chief of the public security forces at Omarska. Here we see him talking to the reporters from ITN and from the Yugoslav crews. The crews were allowed to film whatever they wanted and to talk to anyone they liked. But the ITN people never showed the public any of the footage shot in Omarska. Why? Could it be because Omarska didn't look that bad? That it didn't give the proper image of a Serbian detention center? We visited the prison, which had previously been the conference hall of the local mining company administration building. As we and the Yugoslav crew filmed that day, we often accidentally included pictures of Ms. Marshall, shown here, and other members of her ITN crew. We talked to the prisoners at lunchtime. We talked to their wives and children who visited them freely. 